Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. I am Ryan Kramer, the head of marketing and growth here at Frisbee. Uh, sorry for the little bit of delay, as everyone can tell, live webinars or webinars in general. You might have some audio issues around the house. And for whatever reason, people next door to me decided it was a hilarious time to go ahead and uh, blow their leaves or turn on the loudest equipment that they can possibly do. So I was trying to let it calm down a little bit before we can uh, before we can discuss our exciting webinar today, NARF versus Canada FBA, unleashing the true North potential. Um, again, I will kind of like welcoming in everyone uh, to our today's webinar. This is both a live version, but also a recorded version. So if you happen to get a hold of this webinar later to, uh, today or in the next couple of weeks or months, welcome. Thank you for tuning in and learning what it looks like to uh, grow your brand internationally with these Amazon programs. Again, here at Frisbee, our job is always to make uh, brands succeed internationally and helping them along the way. So our job is to educate you, whether it be our customer or people who are just dipping their toes into the international waters. You might be just a beginning your international selling experience with the NARF program. You might ask yourself, what is the NARF program or the North American Remote Fulfillment Program? You might just be wanting to learn more information and how to best empower your brand moving forward. So we're going to kind of encapsulate all that today. So I have multiple screens up here. It's just going to be me talking today. If you have questions, luckily for you, you can ask them in the uh, chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. So if you're listening or doing something separately, go ahead and just put those in and I'll answer those questions here at the end of our presentation. So to kick things off today, again, thank you for everyone who's attending live on either our social platforms or watching this later on the replay, or you have tuned in and have uh, joined in on our webinar. Let me know where you're listening from. Let me know if you're selling uh, NARF or FBA Canada or both. Um, but first and foremost, just wanted to kick things off and say happy Halloween to everyone who is here in the United States. Um, if you're celebrating or if you are uh, Again, no tricks here, uh, all treats. Hopefully we can help empower your business to grow uh, better in Canada and just give you a little bit of pieces of information in the next 45 minutes or so to help you uh, make better decisions growing. And what's the difference between these two programs? That's what we're going to break down today. So this will be a good series. This is something we'll keep uh, adding on to. So stay tuned and follow us on social media or all of our uh, channels to be up to date on the new educational programs that we're going to be having on with both sellers, service providers, and just uh, you're truly talking about the latest and greatest ways to build a brand on Amazon. So go ahead and get started as people are starting to trickle in, saying hi to everyone. Again, you can go ahead and answer or uh, say hello live, but go ahead to go kick things off. On our presentation today, I'm going to be in the bottom left-hand corner so that I can follow along with everyone, but if you have questions, feel free to... Um, Feel free to I'll put those in the chat and I'll try to monitor as we go. So again, everyone, welcome. This is the sellers in e-commerce for enthusiasts, I should say, for everyone who's trying to grow their brand internationally. Um, I'm excited to present this webinar for everyone today and what that looks like here moving forward. So go in and kick things off. Uh, stick with me here. And in the next 45 minutes... I'm going to be talking the great, again, the great North, the great white North, as they like to call it in Canada. Whether you're already selling on Amazon or considering the sleep, this webinar is actually going to be tailor made for you. And this is why. So, we're going to, for setting the agenda today, I want to make sure that everyone's going to be apparent what we're going to be talking about. We're going to explore the North American Remote Fulfillment Program. We're going to chart our course then next for expanding your Amazon business into Canada with the help of Frisbee and what. The other option is in selling directly in FBA Canada. And if there's something special out in store at the end, an exclusive limited discount for our customers or for people who are wanting to explore the Canadian market, I'm going to be able to uh, let you in on a little bit of a cost savings. Uh, here's uh, you know a little bit of a special here at the very end. So stay tuned towards the end. If you're watching the recording, make sure you watch all the way through so that you can uh, get all the all the benefits that come with working with Frisbee and staying on a webinar like this. So, so fasten your seatbelts, everyone. Let's navigate the exciting terrain of Amazon Canada together. Are you ready? Perfect. Let's go ahead and dive in. So let's overview 
Canada specifically. So everyone, if you're an Amazon seller and you're, you've been selling for maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, maybe you've been selling for years now, everyone understands that there is a first natural progression of selling on Amazon, starting your brand. It's more than likely going to be in the USA marketplace. United States marketplace is the largest marketplace for Amazon. I don't have to go into too much detail. You see plenty of YouTube videos on this. You see every piece of content that's established in there. You're trying to make a headway into the United States market. That's established big market where a lot of people can make it or break it, as they say, in the Amazon space. Once you get to a certain level, you're looking at growing your brand. And as I like to say in a lot of our different uh, educational pieces, growing your brand internationally and becoming an actual international brand on Amazon and in e-commerce. You're looking for ways to diversify, whether it be your own uh, retail store or B2C website, or the easiest route, as we like to say at Frisbee, is to diversify and grow your business through multiple marketplace channels. And that could be done through Amazon easily. Traditionally, the next step for a lot of sellers if they're starting in the United States is to look at the North and look at Amazon Canada. There is a lot of great things about Canada, and these are all statistics that I'm going to share that were shared at the Amazon Accelerate Conference. So it's from the direct boards and the directors of the global sales team and the directors that presented there at Amazon Canada. You can check it out on the Sell with Amazon YouTube page, but these are all direct quotes and information they've shared directly with Frisbee. Nothing's made up. These are all statistics that they pulled from their own ecosystem and then also the environment of what Amazon, what Canada looks like as an overview, about 90% of Canadian population of the Canadian population lives within 150 miles of the United States border. What typically sells well in the United States sells well in Canada, and that's very true. A lot of people, um, in when we presented at Amazon with the Canada team, they actually said a lot of people actually drive across the border if they can't find their product and will have a PO box or some sort of established location where they can send it to in the United States if they can't find it in Amazon.ca. So there's an opportunity for a lot of customers who are looking for your product potentially that are very close to the border. Again, it's being shopped number one through Amazon.ca. That's the Canadian Amazon marketplace. And the number two is Amazon.com because lots of the customers up there in Canada, they're actually searching and they know that they have to have it shipped from uh, .com. Again, that cross-border experience. You see the same thing in different countries in Europe, same thing with Australia and Japan, in different close countries that might have a bigger market, they might be able to ship across borders uh, with different programs. The consumer is looking for your product. You just have to know what they're looking for and how much they're looking for you. That that is what's going to be the tell sell sign of growth for your brain. 161 million monthly visitors. If you're a statistic nerd like myself, you're going to see that in Amazon Canada. This is the uh, monthly users that are using Amazon.ca. And 85% of Canadians, this was a very surprising one, actually use Amazon monthly, which is which is which is pretty interesting, even though that I, I think the statistic is a, Canada represents about 12 to 15% of the United States population. 85% of that is using Amazon Canada Marketplace on a monthly basis. Think about that, for example. That's a big opportunity for sellers who are looking for that marginal growth, that expansion opportunity for their brands to be in front of more people who are searching for your product. Again, very similar to the U.S. market. Top Canada uh, categories in Canada, it include, and this is come again coming from the direct from Amazon Canada's team. Number one in 2022 was lifestyle. Now it represents about $3.8 billion in revenue. That's the bath category, the bedding category, home decor, very typical of you would see similar in the United States. You know, the HRV category, um, so the home renovation category, the um, et cetera, the toys, the tools, the sports and the outdoors. Category representing about two point nine billion in um, in revenue. Then there's the health and personal care with one point eight billion dollars in revenue. That's the baby, beauty, and grocery categories. So again, growing categories as well here in the United States. And then you have the PC or electronics category, with represents about one point eight billion dollars in revenue. And that's the laptop accessories, the desktops, the monitors, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that that is the Amazon marketplace 
overview at a high level. Now, let's meet Narf. Let's dive into the heart of what today's discussion is. The key to Amazon Canada's success and the start of every Amazon international growth, in my opinion, is through Narf. Short for North American Remote Fulfillment Program, it's ju- it's more than just a program. It's evolved over time. It's been around for a couple of years, but it's really evolved into something where people get insight on what their brand success can be in North America. That includes the Can- uh, Canada market. That includes obviously United States, and then our friends to the south. That is the Mexican marketplace. Plus, Brazil has been added on to this program. Opportunity to get into Mexico and Brazil is something that I won't talk about today, but I want people to really focus on the Canadian marketplace and the comparison between the two. We're not excluding that marketplace because the, those are not great opportunities. They fa- they actually are, but we're going to really focus on the difference between fulfilling by NARF versus Amazon FBA and what that difference looks like and how to make the right business decision for you this summer. So again, Uh, In the next few minutes, I'm actually going to explore the core components of NARP, uncover the financial dynamics, meaning what the costs are going to be, what the differences are, and how to make the best business choice for you as a seller. And obviously potential challenges for both of those ecosystems, but the pros that come with them as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So the core components of what NARF is, North American Remote Fulfillment Program, things you must have before we can dive into how it helps us, we have to understand who this can help. So who's eligible? The professional seller mandate is a prerequisite for enrollment in NARF. What that means is that you must be a professional seller or a professional seller account. You can't have your individual seller account. You also must have a North American unified account. That's essential to being a part of this program. It allows seamless switching between the US, Canadian, and the Mexican marketplaces. But it's equally important to be aware that product restrictions for those markets also come into effect. So there are no prohibited products, dangerous goods, or restricted items that you can sell in those marketplaces. So product compliance actually has a factor in Canada as well as Mexico if you can sell on either of those markets. So you must go ahead and look at the list that's in Seller Central. And um, we can also help you out and make sure that your product is compliant here at Frisbee. But a quick check to see if your category or product would be have an issue. You can actually search on those lists in Seller Central. And we will uh, share some of those links as well here in the follow-up and our, uh, in our follow-up uh, videos as well. So ensuring compliance with those requirements is crucial for a smooth experience across NARF. Now, as we delve deeper into NARF's financial dynamics, you'll discover that this program can be a game changer for people who are a part of it. Recently, be, you would be, uh, people say, how do you become part of NARF? And again, before we go into financial, how do you, how do you, if you have all these components in place, how do you sign up? Well, if you sign up as a new seller, as of July in 2022, I think my dates are still correct. July of 2022, Amazon will, if you have products that are eligible, will auto enroll you into this NARF or North uh, Remote Fulfillment Program, as they will like uh, say in uh, in Seller Central, and they will actually um, make it available so that these program and your listings will become available in Mexico as well as Canada. So they auto enroll you. You can obviously opt out. You have to manually go in and do that. But it's a program that. Amazon is pushing into new sellers and for more seasoned sellers. You can obviously opt in and out whenever you choose. If you want to uh, not have that option available or sell it directly into Canada directly uh, with, with your products through FBA, that's a separate topic that we'll discuss in a little bit. But if you're just testing the waters to see if you're if there are buyers in those d- different marketplaces, again, mainly in Canada and Mexico, Brazil was added on later on. But if you're trying to see if your product has legs, has that capability for international expansion, this is a great stepping stone program for that. All right, so let's shine some a little spotlight on these fees, if you will. Um, I'm going to, I know I'm kind of covering up the bottom left-hand corner, but for people who are reading through this, this is the financial dynamics of NARF. It's a key factor in obviously expansion. The financials, we want to make sure that our math works in our favor. We want to make sure that with international expansion, 
expansion, you have to understand the costs, the fees in order to make sure that you're still profitable. So one crucial aspect to be aware of is the remote fulfillment fees when you are part of NARF. These fees are tailored to the demands of cross-border shipping and may differ based upon a specific destination. So it's not going to be the same with Canada as well as Mexico. You can't count on the different, those, those uh, same prices, if you will. Be advised, again, because of the fees, this is specifically for shipment fees. Between there are what's called non-peak period and peak period, just like in regular FBA here in the United States. The non-peak period, which is June 30th through when they announced this through uh, October 14th. So we are past that time now. Once you have those fees in the non-peak period, they're quite obviously lower. Um, but once you go into the peak period, which is Q4 and busy time going into the beginning half or, of January of 2024, you will see that uptick in these fees. Anywhere from 50 cents to uh, 60 cents on average depends on the size of your package, but those fees do incur an additional amount because this is a busy time of year. Fulfillment is happening happening in the United States to a different country, so the, the length and time of fulfillment is going to be longer, and obviously the, vol the velocity and the volume is quite large. So Amazon has to supplement that with larger fees. Be aware of that, um, that we are currently, as of this recording and this uh, live uh, webinar, that you're in the peak fulfillment season. Not fun for anyone else, but it's a part of the math that you have to obviously think about when you're selling internationally, just like you are in the United States. In addition to fees, you also have to understand differently, this is not as applicable to U.S. sellers selling in the United States, but it might be for international sellers selling in the United States. You have to understand that there are different tools to adjust prices based upon the exchange rates that Amazon will sell your product in. Obviously, a customer, when they buy a product in Mexico, they're buying the Mexican peso. They're not buying the U.S. dollar. Your product, uh, with the help of Amazon's tools, can actually auto, um, auto price depending on the fees, the demand, what cost of goods that you're putting in, inputting into Seller Central. You can actually have it fluctuate depending on all those additional fees that might not be applicable to the United States, or if there are higher fulfillment fees like with NARF, you can build that into your pricing strategy upfront. So same thing with Canada, you're getting Canadian dollar, you have to have that exchanged back to your US bank account that can be done with Amazon's tools with the currency converter system, uh, or your own international currency exchange ecosystem, whether it be with tools like Payoneer, Air Wallex, Ping Pong Payments, any of those kind of tools that are uh, Seller Central and Amazon Verified, you can use those tools to have those currencies exchanged um, at those rates. So be aware that you will be accepting international currency on top of um, all these additional fees. So making sure that your currency is working for you instead of against you as well. So just periodically trying to reprice and make sure that you're you're not losing money because of that exchange. And then finally, the remote fulfillment fees are aligned with the demands of cross-border shipping. It's important to note that during the upcoming, the, obviously the upcoming peak fulfillment period, there's adjustments you just have to be aware of. So anytime Amazon announces these uh, peak surcharges or demands, um, the price is higher or if the fulfillment fees are higher, whatever that is, you have to be aware of those consistently. So not setting this and forgetting, but just be consistently aware of these prices as they fluctuate throughout the year with demand. But so whether you're expanding to Canada or if you want to in the future think about Mexico, you have to have those clear understandings of those fees, referral fees, everything uh, that's built in Seller Central. You have to have those in mind when making the smart decision, business decision to enter those markets, especially when it comes to pricing your product on your page. Um, same thing with the United States, same thing with any marketplace that we would advise you to enter or help you enter here at Frisbee. We want to make sure that you're profitable from the get-go and helping, um, helping that growth factor not be a hindrance, but be a benefit to you. And again, going off of the, the currency dynamics of profitable pricing, when you expand your business to Canada, you must stay on type of those currency dynamics. So um, just for uh, for profitability purposes, we I'm, I'm going to go back real quick. Um, when, when I did the research and when I was pulling for Canada, uh, for CAD, 
the currency exchange to, to kind of be, and we have this later in the webinar, your currency exchange currently is a $1 US equals $1.34 Canadian. So you have to understand that with the dynamics, it directly influences how you price your products in the Canadian marketplace. So being able to understand how you're pricing it in Canada versus just the United States, or if they're buying your product in the United States and getting it fulfilled to somewhere at their home in Canada, those, are, those different dynamics are going to affect you and your bottom line ultimately when you become a part of NARV. Amazon has a lot of tools that is going to help you uh, and prevent um, like pre prevailing and helping with exchange rates, um, but proactive sellers. And what we would advise doing is being on top of it continuously, uh, constantly uh, advising and uh, monitoring what the exchange rates are doing um, so that you're profitable and you're uh, your expansion in sales instead of losing money just because of currency conversion or fees or anything of that sort. So your goal is to maintain competitive and profitable pricing. What's uh, something else that I will, uh, a tool or a tip or a, a secret trick if people don't understand? Um, that's great, Ryan. These are, these are a lot of numbers you're throwing at me. I saw all of your lists. Uh, I'm sure the questions when I flip back to them are going to uh, pop up and uh, see that. But when you uh, when you look at it all, what what is what's a tool that I can see and make sure the math is mathing for me? As I like to say, that the phrase math make sure math is mathing for you, um, working for you in your favor. If that doesn't make sense, but there is a cool tool. It's in Seller Central. It's free. Um, if you're not aware of it, it's a profitability calculator. You can actually see it um, in Seller Central. If you go to sellercentral.com. Uh, sellercentral.amazon.com, excuse me, forward slash FBA forward slash profitability calculator. You can actually pull in any sort of ASIN, uh, put in your cost of goods, put in your fulfillment fees based upon those charts that I showed you, um, the weights of your products, put all that information in there, your cost of goods, your taxes, what you can potentially assume. You can put that in there and see the difference between NARF profitability versus fulfillment by Amazon um, profitability or even take it a step further in fulfillment by merchant um, capability. So if you are looking at either of those three uh, ecosystems, this profitability calculator works for both Canada, it works for Mexico, it works for, um, I also believe Europe, There, there's one that's being developed or it, it's part of it as well. But all the NAR NARF countries, this profitability calculator will work for you. All right, so now that we know all the fees associated, all the costs. It's essential to understand that both opportunities and challenges lie ahead if you still understand the, the numbers involved. So the benefits of NARF. Let's start with the advantages. Uh, again, strategically test new markets. NARF allows you to test it on a, on a lower scale. You're not replicating the same uh, quantity of units that you're trying to ship internationally uh, or sh ship that uh, from the United States. You're not trying to duplicate that right away. This is your way to kind of uh, step or um, test the waters, if you will, into new international markets. So this program is a very big benefit on seeing what the capability could be. There's no need to file taxes in Mexico, Canada, or Brazil. Again, with NARF, that is a um, you know that that is a, a benefit to it because there is an assumption on customs and import duties and taxes on the customer side of things. So what that means is if I go to amazon.ca and I buy your product from the United States, it's fulfilled in the United States. I, on the on the product listing page, I'm gonna see in the bottom, it's gonna say uh, other DAC taxes, duties, and uh, customs fees. So the customer right in the be very beginning when they're making their purchase decision before they add it to cart or purchase with one click, they actually see what they would have to pay for import duties and taxes and pay um, to receive it. They, You as a seller are not having to file for that or having to pay those sorts of fees. So it's a benefit for you, benefit for you as a seller if you don't want to have to deal with that from the very get-go. Obviously, as you grow and there's a threshold, it's $30,000 in sales. Once you head over that threshold, you will you will have to which is a good thing that you're growing your business, you will have to file uh, for VAT and um, duties and taxes um, in that marketplace. So just be aware of when you're testing on a lower scale, 
in those waters. NARF is a good program, so you don't have to right away dive into the taxes and uh, the taxes side of things if you choose not to. Um, the other the other benefits of it is letting Amazon obviously handle those those capabilities, but uh, automatically with the tools that with NARF can if you choose it to, uh, let it to, you can let it set international listings and create those for you. You don't have to do translations. It will automatically create those based upon your US, uh, because of your US unified account, they will create those listings for you. So you can tweak and optimize if you so choose, but that those are the, uh, those are the benefits of NARF right away. The challenges, however, uh, to be aware of, on the flip side, you must be aware of, cross-border shipping might lead to longer delivery times. So on average, you're talking six to twelve days for delivery, even though that uh, for, for to a customer. So, how NARF works is even though uh, my product is in an FBA warehouse, that's that's where your um, that's where your products have to be um, stored in the United States. It will still show up as Prime eligible, and Prime uh, customers will actually see it as shipping in six to twelve days. So you won't get the traditional one, uh, two hours or one day or even two-day shipping, you're getting it fulfilled from a different country. It's going to be a longer wait time. So, uh, consumers are very aware of this ecosystem, and if it's something that they need right away, whether it be a giftable item or something, whether a uh, shelf-stable item or something where you know they just want it or need it right away, that's not going to be uh, an option for you as, a, as a, a seller, but also as a consumer, you're not going to want to have that product, so they're going to look for your competitor, or another product, so it's it's a challenge that the fulfillment timelines they're not as instantaneous under the Prime badge as one would expect. Obviously, the import duties for customers they're having to pay for those fees up front instead of you, the seller. So it can be a turn off if they have to pay for those import duties and taxes. Traditionally, they you know people don't like to have to pay additional fees, but they understand that that's a capability and a possibility but it, it could be a barrier from them to purchase your product. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, in inventory management challenges, there's that timeline factor. The higher fulfillment and shipping cost, as we broke down, fulfillment from a different country will be a higher fulfillment cost than if you were shipping via FBA. It's it's tried and true that there is they charge higher. It doesn't matter if it's smaller or a larger product. You're... Uh, your product will be charged more because of the longer delivery timeline and getting it across border. So they will charge you more as a seller. So that's a higher cost that you have to assume on your end instead of just shipping directly with FBM. Return logistics, same thing. You assume the same ecosystem on return items if you're selling um, textiles, if you're selling any sort of like luggage or items that under the terms and services of Amazon can have free returns. You're assuming those same fees and uh, issues. They would be fulfilled um, to the customer if they're returning it. They would be sent back to USA FBA warehouse. <coughs> Excuse me, and they would uh, be looked over by the review or uh, the uh, returns team. And they can have it be uh, capable for resale. But again, the fees and the cost of it returning back to um, to the fulfillment center in the United States. Is going to be a lot more so consider that in your uh in your category uh planning when it, when it comes to do i have a lot of returns for, for my product hopefully not but you know there is a percentage that will happen you have to understand those fees that come with that and then again the to reiterate even more the six to twelve day prime shipping uh, it's not something that everyone feels warm and fuzzy from from a consumer side of things so the customer um, experience is not as fantastic in the prime ecosystem as it would be if you're selling FBA. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a quick drink. And again, just a quick moment to, to kind of take a step, uh, a pause, if you will. If you have questions, go ahead and put the comment section. I don't have it pulled up right now, but if uh, you are if you are asking questions, which we have a couple that came in from Thomas, it looks like, I'll answer those at the very end and more than happy to answer those in um, here, here later on once we've covered all the, the comparisons. So for time reasons, I will keep uh, trekking along since we have about 10 minutes left uh, in this webinar. Excuse me, so the recap, so recap everything. 
dive into all the facets of NARF before uh, program for Amazon seller knowledge. It's your best ally. So just weaponizing yourself with all this information you know about NARF. However, just understanding with any international expansion, it's best to have a comprehensive research for your product to make sure that um, your product is going to be successful. You want to dive into, um, while Amazon's automation tools are beneficial, be proactive with prime management or price management during optimal pr uh, pr uh, profitability, excuse me, um, diving into the policies like, uh, you know, the fees, the selected target um, audience is, is your audience going to be acceptable with uh, or receptive to your, your product that you're selling. And then um, making sure that your product is, it fits with NARF and it's uh, seamless and it's not in one of those, it's an eligible product to be fulfilled by NARF. So when it's structured with that approach, as you're starting to think about all the different new to, uh, products you're going to be releasing, any new iterations that come out of those products, making sure you keep those in mind again with comprehensive research, marketplace selection, if Canada or do I want to do Mexico or I want to do both, um, active price monitoring, again, making sure that you're watching it and not just setting and forgetting it, just like anything in our business. And then the enrollment workflow of making sure that your products are compliant and uh, everything fits. And if there's growth opportunity, you can see, hey, maybe start with NARF and then f uh, start to see which ones are um, taking off and and maybe switch over to the next program that we're going to talk about. It's Canada FBA. So those are the uh, things that you have to be thinking about and take this structured approach, approach, this measured approach about engaging and entering a new market like Canada potentially. Now, let's talk about, now that we've talked about NARF, dive into it. Let's explore Amazon FBA and what it looks like in Canada. So again, it's a simple, simpler process uh, for the fulfillment side of things. This is where you're going to win, but it's also going to help you stand out to customers in different ways that NARF can't. Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA, obviously, as we all know, is a service that allows Amazon sellers to store their products in Amazon's fulfillment centers in Canada. Um, that's what we're talking about today. And Amazon takes care of the order fulfillment, including picking, packing, and shipping. So nothing that is coming from a different country. It's in one of Amazon's uh, vast amounts of fulfillment centers up in Canada. And again, 90% um, of going back to Earlier statistics, 90% of Canadians live within 150 miles of the U.S. border. So you're talking about that lower uh, that lower part of the Canadian uh, country demographic uh, geography, if you will, or where most people are going to be located. Um, let's look at the pros and cons of obviously going through uh, Canada FBA. And uh, the statistic, I'm not glazing over it, but it's something that also is is open and we can share it from Amazon's global sales team is that according to Amazon, this is a big, this is a big uh, light bulb. If you're selling in NARF right now and looking to get into Amazon FBA, or maybe this is something that uh, you're thinking, how, how successful will I be? Well, according to Amazon's statistics, global sales teams tout that sellers see an, again, it was a 4X in 2022. 2023, now it's an 8x lift on average when they see switch of sellers who switch from NARF program, if they're fulfilling and selling via NARF, to Amazon FBA in Canada. So it's such a great, if you were looking at if if growth for my brand is on the docket, which it should be, but if finding different ways to pull these levers for growth is on the docket for your brand, for your agency, for some product that you're looking for different ways of how do we how do we get more margin to our bottom line? This is it. This is the big indicator of what is going to be successful for a lot of different brands who are seeing incremental success or at least seeing those certain uh, small sales or a couple sales or even a decent amount of sales through NARF as you're automatically enrolled and you're getting fulfilled. This is a good indicator that if you can 8x that number, that's a good number to kind of base your 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 growth and your revenue on here moving forward. So a really cool statistic that I like to to share with all of our sellers who are coming into our uh, ecosystem when they're talking about how, you know, what's the benefits of growing in Canada. There you go. All right. Advantages of using FBA. Um, obviously, efficient order of fulfillment. FBA streamlines the entire fulfillment process from storing your products uh, in their warehouses to packing and shipping their orders. 
It's an easy ecosystem. You can access to all of Amazon's Prime customers. Obviously, it's Prime uh, fulfillment customers who pay the the yearly fee of, I think it's I I want to say it was 130 US dollars last time I looked, but that that price has changed uh, so often. I I don't know what it is right now, but if you have a Prime eligible customer in Canada, they can see uh, those products and get the benefits of the quicker shipping. Uh, the prices, if you have a special deals or coupons, like on Prime Day or in Q4, you have Prime specific pricing. You have a lot of more customers who are going to convert with you instead of a non-FBA or a non-Prime uh, um, fulfilled product. So again, seeking fast shipment is a big benefit for a lot of sellers who, who are Prime um, in Canada. You also have reliable customer service that I don't need to tout about, but I will again the benefit of it is the handling of the customer inquiries, the returns, and any issues related to orders. Amazon helps handle that, um, providing another uh, high-level ecosystem of customer service for your brand. And then, obviously, organic rank. This is something that doesn't get talked about, but I like to make people aware of. When you have your product that is regionally available to that demographic, again, you're having it fulfilled from, if you're using NARF, it's being fulfilled from the United States. If you're in Canada and it's regionally nearby, again, within 150 miles or so or kilometers or however you want to dictate, however close those fulfillment centers are to that customer, <coughs> Amazon organically will rank those products higher on search terms because they're regionally available and they're also being fulfilled by Amazon. So again, the organic lift of your availability of your product is going to be shown across the board. So having it available locally is going to bring additional benefits like higher ranking without having to pay uh, PPC cost as high. And again, that's also a benefit of going into a marketplace like Canada. You don't have the exorbitant fees and PPC um, that you would do in the United States. So there's an opportunity to really take ownership of your category where your customers may not be already and really thrive in that ecosystem. So Think about that. That is something that we see with customers and that Amazon rewards and their algorithm regionally local, uh, regionally available products are going to be ranked higher because of that capability instead of obviously out of stock or low inventory um, products that aren't uh, easily available or available quickly. So considerations, obviously, with using FPA, just like anything, there's pros and cons. Uh, storage fees. Know what the storage fees are. They're different from the United States. You know that they're in a different um, a different country. So the Canadian dollar and what the storage fees are. Um, the velocity of sales could vary. Um, you're not looking at a one-to-one -one ratio from U.S. to um, U.S. FBA versus Canada FBA. You know that there might be less sales in Canada. So you have to be aware the velocity is going to, that be different. So use your tools and your technologies available to you to understand how often, um, you know, you're going to need to fulfill uh, products to FBA warehouses. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you also have a limited control over shipping and customer experience, which is not, um, you know, if you're not doing merchant fulfilled, is not a bad thing. Most uh, sellers are engaged in FBA ecosystem, but it is a bit of, is a consideration to know that you don't have uh, control over the shipping and customer ecosystem. Um, it's not being pulled from one bulk area. You have to manage two. Now, um, you know, inventory in Canada, but also in the United States or wherever other country you might be selling in. So that's a consideration. Uh, potential competition with other FBA sellers. Again, just knowing that competition exists everywhere. Just know that there might be um, people's, uh, just like in the United States, there, there's a consideration to understand your, your, your competition and, um, and, and how they, how they're fulfilling. If they are fulfilling with FBA or if they're not, this is something that they might have an advantage over you. Um, if you're not taking, uh, if you're not selling via Canada FBA, uh, the demand for your product may be lower, know your customer, obviously with product, com uh, product demand tool or product compliance tool or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the tools within Amazon, they have a lot of new, um, you know, where people are searching for their keyword search, uh, search terms, as well as other, uh, terms and what numbers of your, your, uh, competition and what potential there might be, uh, for those markets. Those tools are popping up more and more and they're available product, com uh, pr 
I'm, I'm blanking on the tool and I just wrote a blog about it. So check out our blog for this new, it actually is live now. So if you go to uh, frisbee.com forward slash uh, resources and you're looking at our blog section, it's a new tool that uh, um, Amazon is releasing for sellers for free that allows you to look at your demand across different marketplaces, including the EU as well as Japan. My little plug, plug for our blog that just got released uh, yesterday. So uh, check out that and uh, look and see what the demand for your products would be in different countries. So know before you, you start selling. And then um, tax laws and obligations, obviously GST and HST. The threshold is about 30,000 uh, in sales and before you have to start worrying about that. But once you get to that seller obligation, you will have to start to uh, pay for um, taxes in Canada or Mexico, but Canada specifically for this uh, for this exercise. Obviously, fulfillment by um, fees within Canada. This is the this is the um, these are the numbers that I wanted people to be aware of. Obviously, one dollar, uh, as alluded to earlier, equals about as of when I posted this, uh, one dollar and thirty eight Canadian dollar, uh, and then five pounds in the United States to kind of give a quick metric. Uh, it it comes out to be two thousand two hundred sixty seven. 0.96 grams. So to look at a five pound product and what those fulfillment fees are, um, you're looking at here in the bottom right hand corner about, you know, $9 and 74 Canadian dollars. You convert that into us dollars. You take about, a, um, a 30, 38% uh, discount on that. And that's what you're talking about in us dollars for fulfillment per product. So again, knowing, knowing your fulfillment, uh, costs in metrics, um, we all get to stretch our brains and use those different dynamics. Um, if we're in the United States, it's not pounds, it's grams. If it's not uh, dollars, it's Canadian dollars. Just know your numbers. Um, and just like uh, with NARF, holiday fee fulfillment fees have already been applied as of October 15th and will go until the middle of January. As of January 15th, those will go back to non, uh, non-peak fulfillment uh, prices. All right, so now that we compared the two, and we, we've kind of considered both, what does Frisbee help with? Um, well, Frisbee, as if you're a customer of ours or if you're not, uh, we help with all the different components of expanding to Canada. It's one of our favorite markets to help people with. We help with the NRI number, which is non-resident number, to help you start selling within Amazon, uh, in Amazon Canada directly. <clears throat> we help act as the importer of records, so help with compliance and customs um, uh, crossing the border. Customs clearance, helping with tax setup with our partners um, in Canada and other marketplaces. We also have discounted uh, small, that's small, not small, small parcel and pallet shipments to Canada. And just for North America, we also have tracking for US and Canada markets as well. So we help with all these components, no matter where you are, if you're selling with NARF, Obviously, Amazon's taking care of that, but if you're taking that next step, we really help with the FBA component of it, and we help uh, get your products there on an effectively quick and uh, seamless process. Getting set up is a value-added process that we that we help with and understanding the local regulations on what it takes to get compliant with those markets. So that is uh, what Frisbee helps with, and to kind of wrap up this call quickly, I know I already went five, four minutes over time and I want to get some Q&A before the end of the hour. Uh, special offers for Canada. If you're a, currently a seller, um, I'm going to follow up uh, in your engagement with our ecosystem. We'll send a follow-up email with a special promo code as well for you, uh, 10% off of your next three shipments. When you work with, uh, when you work with Frisbee, just uh, look for the promo code for the webinar. But right now, we obviously have a really cool offer going until November 3rd. If you are shipping anywhere within the Amazon uh, ecosystem or Frisbee ecosystem using us, if you have shipments that are 500 pounds plus, if you use promo code restock10, you save 10%. And then obviously with promo code restock15, you can actually save um, with 1,000 pound shipments, you can save on 15% of your shipment. That's not inclusive of the taxes, duties, and uh, peak surcharges, but just to let you know, saving some money going into what well, we are here in Q4. If you're looking to send larger uh, shipments to make sure that you're fulfilled with those, uh, your inventory levels are fantastic. Go ahead and use those promo codes in our new Frisbee 360 ecosystem. 
If you don't know what Frisbee 360 is, you haven't been paying attention. If you're a customer, you're probably rolled over. Hopefully you love the new ecosystem and uh, we would love your feedback of that, making it easier to get your products into Canada and beyond. This is why we created this webinar and we wanted to uh, share these, um, these little offers for you. So that's all I have right now. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my other, um, other screen here as we have more people entering. Lots of questions coming in from all across all, all the ecosystems, so I love seeing that. Um, let me take a look. See right here, I'm Thomas. Uh, again, I haven't read these as they're coming in, and I'm one person. So if we if you have questions, go ahead and pop them in here. Otherwise, uh, thank you for attending our webinar. If you're watching the replay, thanks for taking some time out of your day to watch more about what the what the key components are of between North America Remote Fulfillment Program, getting started, the fees and all the inclusive uh, numbers that in, are involved with it and what's the right choice for you as a seller. So uh, Thomas, um, invite all of your network on LinkedIn. Awesome, thank you Thomas for inviting your entire network on LinkedIn to this, that's amazing. Help, if you're a friend of Thomas, thanks for uh, Rocksteady Holdings in Canada. Thanks for uh, reaching out. I love the ca uh, Canadians up there. They're amazing uh, to work with and uh, we appreciate your support of that. Um, could you please email us the presentation afterwards? It's going to be available. So if you get if you're on this live link, you will also get an email follow up that with the recording. Also, here's a fun note: if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that's going at Frisbee. If you just search at Frisbee in YouTube, you will be and subscribe to our channels. You will be notified and click that little bell. Like you all know this, this is not new to our technology. All of these recordings will be put on there effectively, and we will make sure that you are notified of uh, future uh, amazing content pieces that we publish through here, whether it be webinars, podcasts that I host, um, little piece of information of news in the Amazon ecosystem. This is not just for Canada, but beyond all the different marketplaces that we help support and help uh, helping sellers. Check that out. Make sure you subscribe to our channels or follow us on LinkedIn or YouTube or TikTok. We're even on um to, for, for content and education there. So um, this will be, yes, Thomas, the uh, the presentation will be present. Uh, they will be emailed to you. And I apologize if your eyesight, <laughs> if your eyesight is, uh, if it comes through blurry. So um, do you pay taxes above 30,000 on NARF? Yes, that is a good question. This is, uh, hopefully I answered that, uh, Prak. Uh, you do pay taxes on that. Again, that is with the, the Canadian tax compliant uh, ecosystem uh, we have a uh, great partners um with that that would help advise you on that and they're fantastic and they're free to work with they would help get you set up making sure what the what the timelines are to get set up to pay taxes are and then um after that it's it's a automated system that the these companies help you with so notifying it's a good thing if you're having to worry about taxes being paid in canada that means you're selling a lot more in the um in that marketplace so it's a good thing to have to worry about but here at frisbee our customer success team will even just hand hold you through the process what it takes to sign up it's really quick and easy uh to do for a lot of sellers and then the timeline for them their approval for you know getting like vat numbers and whatnot will help you understand how long that takes to do it but right now you can start selling under that thirty thousand uh uh dollar threshold you can start selling and you don't have to worry about it through narf uh, my friend Antonio Vindi uh, on LinkedIn. I appreciate the, the shout out. Canada FBA over NARF always. Uh, if you have any sort of insight, I've had him on webinars, I've had him on our podcast. Man who's selling in, Antonio, if you're on this still, um, nine different marketplaces now, going under 11, I want to say. A crazy amount of marketplaces that he is well versed in. Uh, FBA, he touts obviously over, over NARF. He is an international brand, and majority of his sales, as of last one we talked, are coming through international marketplaces and not just U.S. So there's a big growth component that he knows and understands. Again, an FBA is what we tout at Frisbee, but it doesn't mean that it's a good fit right away for everyone. Just understand the pros and cons for both, and that's that's the point of this webinar. So Antonio, my man, uh, my sales went from five thousand a month, and this is a uh, I love this case study. Because Antonio went from Canada FBA to uh, from NARF to Canada FBA, his sales went from five thousand a month from NARF to twenty five thousand a month with FBA. That's a five x uh, improvement there, and not that was on the low end. Uh, Amazon's touting eight x for a lot of sellers. 
So there's that incremental growth just being available on Canada FBA. Again, the the numbers pretty much uh, the make sure the numbers work out for you, but fulfilling by Amazon and sending by using like the tools like Frisbee to get the goods there, you save on a lot of those uh, upfront fees and costs. And that way you can save and pocket more money plus some more sales. It's just a win for everyone. My sales went from 5,000 a month north to look at that. So he went from 5,000 a month now in NARF to 150,000 to 250,000 a month with FBA. Incredible. I love this. This is good news. And hopefully a lot of sellers who are watching this can uh, take, uh, take, you know, leadership from Antonio. There is that growth factor. And again, the organic component of ranking um, in a, com in a market like that is a big factor. And also just making sure that your goods get to a customer quickly through the FBA ecosystem. It's the same thing with the United States. Um, that's why there's a big difference between fulfilled by Amazon and uh, fulfilled by merchant. You see a lot of conversions a lot higher with FBA versus merchant. This is a very similar like program. Just your product is available easily right away in NARF um, versus FBA. But once you get going, um, that half step, if you will, take Antonio's lead and jump into the FBA market. Um, if it works for you. Um, Leonard, I assume food products have to comply with Canadian government requirements, such as bilingual labels. That's a good question. Um, we at Frisbee would uh, advise upon the shipping and what Amazon's TOS would say. So depending on what your food product is, depending on how it's packaged and what uh, languages you currently have on your product labels, yes, we would say that a good piece of advice if you're thinking about growing internationally, don't just stick with one um, bilingual label. Think about trying to find a multiple fold um, with your product labeling or your package label and making sure that it's translated to like German, for example, or um, uh, Japanese and uh, different marketplaces that you might expand to next in the future so that you can kind of build out and you don't have to be reactive, you're, you're starting to have inventory that's available and you don't have to run into those issues. So we'll walk you through those components. If you have questions, the Frisbee team will help with uh, the specific food item that you're referring to, Leonard, um, but that's a good question. Um, yes, we would advise follow TOS and follow shipping requirements and government requirements to get goods into the country. A um, couple more questions and then I'll go ahead and wrap up since we have about two minutes before. I want to keep everyone on a nice Halloween um, timeline. Um, do we need to register a Canadian business to sell in via Canada in uh, NCA, uh, FBA NCA? So just like US, you would have a non-resident number. So here at Frisbee too, uh, Prac, if you are not a customer of Frisbee's, which I hope you will be after this, reach out to, I will go and throw up my email again. Whoops, add to there. Ryan at frisbee.com. Go go to Ryan. Uh, email me at Ryan at frisbee.com. I will get you help uh, with setting up your non-resident number. Um, just let me know if uh, if any of our customers are still debating on how to get in Canada and you need help with that. Just let me know. Email me directly. Subject line: uh, NARF versus Canada FBA webinar, and I will know exactly what you're referring to. So if you um, if you email me that, we will help you get set up to sell directly like a business ID number or a tax ID number, you will have a business resident, uh, non-resident number that we can help you get set up with that. That's only until November 3rd, says Rick. Well, Rick, you will get, uh, as, as an attendee of the webinar, we will follow up with another, uh, we will follow up with maybe some specials. So keep an eye on your email. Make sure you subscribe to our email list and uh, don't unsubscribe, but make sure uh, attendees of this We'll get a follow up with these discounts. Those are current ones that are happening right now. So if you have you're planning your inventory later, uh, again, email me and let me know what you're thinking ahead of time, and I'll make sure that um, if you're an attendee, since you were attended live, that we'll help you out with the discount for your next uh, shipment with Frisbee. I'm not yet a Frisbee customer. How do I set up a call with you to discuss Frisbee services and costs for expanding to Canada? Prac, good question. I have your email address if you input it, but you can email me, ryan at frisbee.com. I will get you set up with one of our amazing, amazing sales um, expansion specialist team. And then they will walk you through what is expected to get through um, to get started in Canada. We'll review your products to make sure that, you know, everything looks good for compliance wise, um, just as an, um, an analysis. And then we'll give you expectations on timelines to get uh, shipping um, as soon as possible. So if you email me, 
um, again, subject line, I will get you personally in touch with our amazing team over there and answer any of your further questions as well. So um, how do the returns in Canada FBA work? Can you ship back? Yes, good question. So Rick, we actually help with returns as well, um, Frisbee with Canada. Uh, we have uh, the options are just like in the United States. You can have them uh, sent to returns to a third party warehouse, which we would help uh, help with if uh, you need returns with uh, certain items to keep it in Canada, because obviously crossing borders would be, um, you know, multiple shipments and then currency exchanges and, and whatnot. So we wouldn't want to minimize that, but we'd help you either consolidate to resend in to repackage or uh, to send it to somewhere that needs to be destroyed. Depends on the product, but we would help with returns as well. That's something that we at Frisbee specialize, especially in Canada. Good question. Um, an incredible Antonio. Um, sorry, LinkedIn user. Uh, I agree with that. And Antonio has amazing statistics. Follow him on LinkedIn. Um, shameless plug for Antonio. Just follow him, and uh, he has great content. He's tied. Uh, he's pretty tied into the Brazilian marketplace, um, which is really cool. So, um, as an Amazon seller, he's one of the great success stories. Uh as a, as a seller that I can always point to, um, and great friend of the great friend of our podcast and, uh, Antonio, hopefully your customer for these are, will be soon. So, um, thank you everyone. Again, have a great, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and email me again. My email is Ryan at frisbee.com. Follow us on social media. Thank you for attending, uh, one of our first webinar series on Canada. This won't be the last one. If you have suggestions or you want to learn about something about international marketplaces, something that came up and you just have a question about, I'll do a full on presentation for you. Um, and I bet you you're not the only person or seller out there who is, has that question. So feel free to submit all your questions and things you would like to learn about at Ryan at Frisbee.com. That's my direct email. I'm the head of marketing and your growth here. So we will uh, be working hard to make sure that you understand what it takes to grow your business internationally. Uh, until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in on this spooky day. Hopefully everyone has a safe and happy Halloween. If you're uh, listening to this live, if you're watching the replay, thanks for tuning in and spending some time with me in my corner of the internet. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, go ahead and check out frisbee.com. But thanks again for tuning in to our webinar, NARF versus Amazon Canada FBA. We'll catch you guys next time.